The year is 2009, 2010. And when I went to college, I decided to relax my hair. I had been natural all my life, but then decided I wanted something different. And I had wanted locks since I was like 15. But when I turned 18 and I had the freedom to do it, like my parents couldn't tell me no anymore, I didn't feel like I was mature enough or I didn't feel like I could handle having locks. So I didn't do it. I went through a whole bunch of different styles when it came to relax here. I really enjoyed it, but it was something I was trying on. It really wasn't who I was. So I ended up doing the big chop. It's weird to say big chop when like I had been natural like all my life, but I, I did, I cut off all my hair. Um, and so like in this transition time, you know, this is still not even the beginning of my spiritual awakening. It was like uh, whispers of something more, something deeper. I had been dating someone who I wasn't supposed to be dating. Um, I had gotten engaged and I knew that I wanted to be with somebody else like after, I don't know, six months into the engagement. And so I broke off this engagement and started dating the guy who I talk about on my channel um, as being, you know, a toxic, abusive relationship. And so it was like, you know, the spiritual like, it isn't really happening yet, but it, it was a whisper there. And then I moved away. So, you know, 2009, 2010, I'm still in the midst of chaos, right? In my professional or like my, my studies, my studies were always A plus, you know, a straight A student, that kind of thing. But in my personal life, things were a mess. It was really a wreck. Um, the guys I was student to date, we're, we're just not emotionally available because I wasn't emotionally available. And then I, I went away to graduate school. And when I came back, because I used to travel home like three times a year. When I came back, I went hiking with my sister to tide pools on St. Croix. I'm from St. Croix. And I had never floated before. I, you know, as a child, my mother would hold us all up, teach us how to float. I couldn't float. Really what it was is I had so much fear that I would fall, that I would sink, that water would go up my nose, that I would never relax enough to actually float. And so at this point, I'm like, I'm going to try. Like, I'm going to really try. I think, you know, in, you know, rationalizing it, the, the salinity of the tide pools is high enough that it can hold me. And this was really my aha moment. This is the moment I talk about so much on my channel because as I was floating, I experienced that oneness, that peace, that like transcendence. Like I experienced it in this moment. My sister took this picture of me and I, I was, I felt so grounded. I felt so centered. I felt like where, where has this been all my life? You know, I, I did the whole stop thinking thing. Like I wasn't even aware that's what was happening, but I had stopped thinking. At that point, my mind had always been going. I think the months before or months after, I keep forgetting which one it is. I had read Eckhart Tolle's uh, The Power of Now. And I think it was after. And everything just seemed to make sense to me. And that, that was it. Like I've never looked back since. I've only been focused on getting better and better and better. So shortly after that, you know, my hair grew, all that wonderful thing, um, definitely fit me in, I always forget which one it is, January. Yeah, December 2014, January 2015, my best friend at the time started my locks. And it was, right, so it's like, shortly thereafter, a year after I was like, you know what? I'm ready to start my locks. And for me, locks are very spiritual. It's not just a, st I mean, this, this is really who I am, right? Like, Sharice has locks. That's who Sharice is. Uh, it's, it's like very important to me. This is like a part of my hair. It's not who I am, but it's, it's such an integral part of who I am. Sort of like, like my skin color is who I, I know I can't change my skin color, but th this here feels so much a part of me and so much a part of how I, I feel seen in the world. Like, this is what I want you to see when you see me in the world. So starting my locks was very important to me. I, I then, th this is, this is, how do you describe it? The matching tattoo thing, right? Because I also have an opinion of people now who get matching tattoos. My best friend and I were in a codependent relationship, hence the tattoos. I think people who are sort of in mesh in that kind of way get tattoos. I still, <laughs> still, you know, no regrets about it, but 
wouldn't necessarily recommend people do that because I think it's a sign of codependency that you have to, like getting that through this sort of an extreme, you know, permanence, if you don't get it removed, decision. Um, but it was a part of my journey, having this experience with her. Um, and then you'll see like our relationship, I've talked about it in a video on my channel, our relationship has changed and we're now now able to get back to being friends. Uh, but that, that tattoo sparked more tattoos. Uh, this was also an image I had of myself. I also have a video called Tattoos Are Spiritual because the, you know, they say, through suffering, you can learn like real lessons. Tattoos are painful to get. They're not like a massage. It's, it's not like you're going to a party and dancing. Like tattoos are needles digging into your skin, um, sometimes drawing blood, ink is being deposited into your skin. And how long can you sit for that, right? My longest tattoo, I think was like three and some hours. Uh, being able to be present in the experience like don't fade off into somewhere else where you don't feel it but actually feeling it is a very very spiritual process and i will finish like the rest of my tattoos very soon but the the tattoos was just really important to me and then i did a solo trip so doing anything by myself was like fear inducing so like back in 2009 maybe I remember I wanted to go to this party and I knew people at the party, but I didn't want to show up by myself. <laughs> I was so afraid to show up by myself that I didn't go. And so like being confident, being myself has really been a long journey for me. So at this point in 2016, I decided to travel by myself um, and loved it. I traveled in the States, but I, I traveled by myself. I traveled by myself. I would go to museums, parks by myself. I would just go on dinner dates by myself. Like I, I was doing, I was doing the most by myself. And then I started uh, lifting weights. Fitness has always been pretty important to me, but I had like this aversion to what I thought would make me too masculine. Like I didn't want my body to become like hard and shredded and like buff like a guy. And so I like, I didn't want to lift weights, but I had met who I thought was a friend, wasn't a friend, that's a whole other traumatic experience video. Um, it was a trainer who helped me figure out like this working out experience thing. And so I started lifting weights and like, it's been one of the best things in my life, which is, you know, I always have like, cause I don't like it at the gym, cause you know, introvert, we don't really like people. Um, so I had to get, you know, the things that I need for myself to be able to stay fit and stay healthy by myself. And then I started doing this thing where I was even more intentional with the people in my life. And so around my birthdays, I would make it a point to spend meaningful time with other people. Uh, you know, I, I'm not interested in like a big party, you know, thing happening, but I am interested in one-on-one -on -one or very small group activities with people who love me, care about me, and want to celebrate me on my birthday. And so I was, let me tell you, I was living my best life. I was living my best life. And I hope you can see, because I wanted these pictures so you can look at my eyes to see the progression of light emanating from me. It's like to the point of now where I just feel like I exude peace, calm, like it's the number one thing people say when they in a room with me by themselves. <laughs> How are you always this calm? Are you always this like peaceful? Like is this like yeah, like 97% of the time, like this is who I am. If you ask my boyfriend, you might see something else. <laughs> but you know, um relationships are for the evolution of your soul. So all that other stuff like in relationships comes out. But generally speaking, I'm very peace level 10,000, you know, really, really enjoying life, loving life. Um in 2017, I went to Sheila Marie's uh retreat. She, I had been following her for a while. I don't follow her anymore because, you know, it's like, uh, sorry for a different day. I don't follow her anymore, but I think she's such an interesting person. She had a retreat and I went with my best friend at the time and it was, it was, it was like a, a pleasurable experience, but going to something like a retreat was something I hadn't done before. And so all these doing things for the first time was just like very, very important to me. Um, 
I know that was a bird. <laughs> you know, being around other people, being seen in a bikini, um, that's not a monokini, wearing makeup, like, like those were new things to me. I went through this period of time in 2017, I think, uh, when I was like experimenting with makeup, you know, beauty stuff, wanting to look my best, feel my best, see, you know, like an insecure Issa Rae, like which lipstick is me? Which lipstick is me? I don't know, is this me? Is this me? Uh, and coming to this place of peace after like, this is how I want to present myself to the world. So one, one of my, <laughs> I, I was a person, people pleaser, who cared so much what people thought that Right, even wearing the, the particular bikini was difficult for me. And so I got to this point where I was like, you know what? I've been wanting to wear a thong bikini for a long time. And so not only is it important for me to wear it, it's important for me to be seen in it because I'm afraid of being seen, right? I, I was so afraid of being seen. And so 2017, 2018, you know, it's like this, this whole image of this is who I am. This is who I am. Uh, and I think the hardest thing to be in this world is yourself. And so if I'm saying this is who I am and I'm showing it to people and then like, you know, still nervous about the reaction, but then doing that enough times that it gets me to the place where I'm at peace with who I am. And so I was, you know, I was like prepping myself, getting ready to wear a thong bikini. <laughs> Look out for the picture of being a thong bikini because it was so not, um, not the person that I had presented to people. And I, I was I was a little afraid, right? And so I'm always saying like, do the thing that scares you. If being seen as who you are, wearing the things that you enjoy wearing, like makes you feel nervous or scared, then you need to do it. You definitely need to do it because this is who you are. And not being yourself will lead to your insides being eaten from the inside out, right? And, and you being miserable and depressed because you're not yourself. So the, the makeup thing was important. Um, experimenting with, the makeup, uh, the ears, like I'm obsessed with ears, but there was one point in time where I was like, I would start sweating at the thought of people seeing me, people I knew seeing me in my ears because it's kind of, it's kind of kooky, but I'm kind of kooky. Like I'm, I'm like a weird kind of person. Like I am INFJ personality type, the rarest personality type. I, I don't, like I'm just a little different. <laughs> I'm just a little different. There's so many things that's different about the way I grew up, um, the, the, my interests. And it's like, I was so afraid to wear these things. And so that's why it was important for me to push myself to do them. And then getting to the point where I'm not afraid of doing those things was, how you say, joyful. So like this time I wore a thong bikini, I was, it wasn't even something I thought about. It was like, oh, that orange bikini looks great. I want it. And I'm gonna wear it. At this point in time, I was traveling. Um, what was I doing? Like, I was doing something with my family at this time. Yeah. And so it's like, it's like, duh. This is what, sh this is who Sharice is now, right? It's, it's not like me performing myself. And this was 2018? 2019. So this is 2019, right? That's so why I say like this, this process for me has been like 10 plus years in the making because at that point in 2019, I was definitely comfortable. But two years before, I was like, I don't know what the reaction is going to be, but I have to do this for myself. And so that's what I did. One of the, like another hallmark for me was like posing nude for myself, but posting it online and then sharing that I was in an abusive relationship. Because one of the things that people who didn't know me or didn't know me well, looking, looking from the outside, was like Charis have everything together. Charis, you know, is accomplishing all these things, looking so happy. But my my relationship, my romantic relationships, a hot mess. Like when I tell you, a hot mess. Okay. Um, so sharing that story out loud for the masses, because I understand one of the things they talk about in the book um, by Robin Norwood, uh, women who love too much is telling your story is a part of the healing process and being able to say it without being emotional, without crying, without being afraid. Like, I'm not afraid of that story. I'm not afraid of the lessons that I learned. It was literally an important part for me. And so was the posing new. This is something I wanted to do. You know, like you have these ideas for your birthday, like getting, finishing my tattoo is, finishing my tattoo is one of the things I wanna do for my birthday, which is in April. I don't, like worrying about what other people might think about my tattoo, who cares? 
at this point, 2022, I really don't care. I really don't care. And so, you know, posing nude for myself, like I did this for me because this is an image that I want to exist. And I'm posting it because I want to share it with other people because the more you are yourself, like the more you can inspire other people to be themselves. And then I reached peace level 10,000, like in actuality. It, it wasn't a performance, like I'm not performing peace. When I'm not feeling peaceful, I also share that too because I feel like it's really important to be transparent that you, it's it's us being humans mean we are not going to feel 100% all the time. But my baseline can be peace level 10,000. Whereas my base level before was probably 10, 1,000, right? Like I was doing the road rages, um, not real road rage, but like I was cussing people in my car, you couldn't hear me. Um, I was getting irritated at things that people would say, you know, constantly on a regular basis. I was swallowing my words, not being myself, not being authentic. And so getting to this point where I can be myself, right? So, like even in my job that I had, um, 20, 2019? Did I start in 2019? 2019, 2018, 2019. Um, being the, you know, funny, not so funny, right? My, all my jokes don't hit. I'm super corny. Uh, <laughs> so some people don't get my jokes, but being able to be myself at work was, was important to me, an important practice to me. And so that that's what I did. Wearing my ears whenever I wanted was important. Go, like practicing piano, like learning piano, like these things are things that I had put off, things that I wasn't doing, things that I was afraid of doing. And so then being able to get to this point of, this is me, like this is me. And here's my poetry book and, and here's my obsession with flowers. Um, and, and here's all the botanical gardens that I've been to. And here is the smile because I'm really happy. Like, I'm really in joy. I'm really at peace. But do you understand? It was a 10 years in the process uh, peace accomplishment, right? Didn't happen overnight. And so now I'm in a loving relationship. Now I, I can have the experiences that I want. Now I have more money because I've welcomed abundance in my life. Like, I, I'm at a place where I understand manifestation, I understand law of attraction, I understand what it means to cultivate peace on a daily basis, I understand what it means to meditate, to really commune with God, so that right here, right now, is beautiful, right? I'm, I'm not so focused, and if I do get real caught up with what the future might be or what the future might hold, I can come back to this understanding that my life is divinely ordered, Everything is working out for my good, and then it becomes easier. I, I, I after I'm 32, right? I just wonder who am I going to be in another 10 years? Like, what, what is Shari going to be like at 40? I, I really have no idea. But what I do know is I continue to evolve. Uh, I continue to get better. Um, I continue to invite even more abundance in my life. Like I'm so interested in continuing to enjoy what life has to offer. And this is why I say like, I wish this level of peace on everyone. I wish people would would not be so upset and tormented by their life. I wish people would not be stuck in suffering. Understand that there is another way. Like there is a way to get better. Uh, and you know, I found my journals here because I, I've been journaling for so many years. This is not even all because I, before I was like, I'm gonna keep some of them. I threw out like a lot of books. Uh, but understanding the the trajectory, the history, being able to look back without judging myself at the things that I did, having this loving understanding that it was part of my process, it was part of my journey. Uh, if you are interested in learning more about how you can go on your spiritual journey, start your spiritual journey, there are so many videos on my channel that are helpful when it comes to meditation, when it comes to journaling, looking inward, figuring out, you know, what your triggers are, how to do shadow work. I'm also going to have even more videos coming soon about how to do all the difficult things that, you know, life has. Like, earth school is chaos. Like Gary Zukov says, earth school is chaos. And really, it's about finding your inner peace so that you can deal with all the challenges in this world. Please let me know what you think about my video and where you are in your spiritual journey. 
Remember to like, subscribe, share this video with someone you think it may help. And thank you for watching.